Have you had any contact from Mr. Fransman? No. Any politicians? Um, I have had some contacts from um, politicians um, of the ANC, the Women's League, mm -hmm. once um, when the story initially broke. Before I came out, um, I spoke to um, Ms. Matecha, very lovely lady, so nice. And she like also gave me a lot of advice, uplifted my spirits. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's basically it. And for the rest, I don't know. Like I could have been talking to some politicians that then you don't even know, like yeah. I don't know. Now, from a legal standpoint, what happens next? Um, I can't like say anything about that because there's nothing set in stone yet and we're not exactly sure of what we're going to do. So for that, I'll leave it to my lawyer mm -hmm. and he's like following his procedures, doing what he can and we'll see where that gets me. And for you, what do you need to move on? For me, I just have to, I just like, I'm just going through every day, like taking it one day at a time, like dealing with the situations at hand. Like, I don't feel like I have to like carry all of this weight like anymore because the whole time that I've been quiet and I didn't say anything, like it, it ate at me. It was like almost like eating me up from inside. Like you feel so ashamed because you don't actually know what's going on and people don't actually know the real truth. And all you see is what other people say about you in newspapers. So just dealing to get through that is, is a whole like process on its own. And I'm just focusing on getting myself back to where I want to be. And like learning to know myself. Because mm. you like, I thought I knew myself before this happened, but you don't actually. You only know yourself when you look at the pieces on the floor and then you're like, oh, okay. That's a part of me. I can pick it up and fit it in somewhere. Like, that's basically what I'm doing now. Now you spoke about reading what what people are writing about you in mm. the newspapers. Um, we were speaking earlier about social media. What's that been like to see people debating your situation, weighing in on your situation, writing about your situation? Well, I stay away from social media. Number one. I don't go on social media, newspapers, I don't, I'll, I'll only read like the headline, I won't go into what they're saying, like I wouldn't watch the news if it gets on the news, I don't do that, because I found that once you get too involved in what they said, you forget what you actually want to do, and then you make that emotional problem yours, and then and it doesn't actually matter. You have to learn which battles to fight. And that's not a battle I'm willing to fight. I don't have to fight the media. And I'm not here to fight like at all. I'm just here like, stating my opinion and what happened to me. What's changed for you in your life since, since that week when you were working for Marius? Um, I would say the way I look at life has changed for the most part. Other than everything else, the chaos and the mayhem that's broke out and like people looking at you differently. I don't look at those things. I don't tend to focus on the negative in life. I always try to find a silver lining in everything. I've yet to find the silver lining in this whole situation, but I'm positive about that. And like I've learned to stop overthinking things. That's the most that's probably changed since then. What advice would you give and another young woman who's been in the same situation. Speak up about it, because it's gonna make you feel better. Just getting that off your chest and just knowing that there's someone else who knows about this, who, who's willing to carry this burden with you and has sympathy for, for what you're going through. Like, speak up about that. It'll make you feel 10,000 times better. Although people will have an opinion about what happened, that's fine. You don't have to care about every single person's opinion about you. You only have to focus on yourself and getting yourself where you want to be, regardless of what happened to you. Did you have any fears associated with speaking out about it? Of course. I spend every day like debating, like, I don't know if I'm ready for this. What if I have an emotional breakdown? Like, what if I won't be able to like do this or what if I decide to turn around and like just run away? I don't, I don't want people to see my face and I'll, like, I feel so ashamed. Like, what are they going to think? That was all the things that ran through my head. And 
I remember like texting my brother specifically and I was like, I'm thinking about this, like, I don't know, like, I don't know if this is the right time to do this. But then I thought to myself, you know what? To get anything in life, you have to give. So I had to give in order to receive the help that I need. So that's what made me decide to, okay, just do it. Like, don't think about it too much. Don't overthink. Like I said, just, just do it. Like, and then go with it. Like, take it one day at a time. Don't let it weigh on you that, like, this heavy burden that's staring you in the face every day. I have to constantly remind myself each day, like, okay, don't think about the big, like, okay, like, everyone is talking about this. The whole country knows, like, everyone knows who you are. Think about now. Do you see people staring at you now? No. So then you're fine. Do you hear people speaking about you now in this present moment? No. So you're fine. That's basically what I tell myself every day.